Hello again, my name is Rodney Reynolds and welcome to another video review. Today I will be looking at the Swiftec MCX 4000 cooler. What is included in this package is the installation guide. You also get some thermal compounds, a YS Tech fan, also this huge copper heatsink, and all the necessary screws and nuts that are needed to install both the fan as well as the heatsink. One thing for sure about this particular heatsink is it's massive and it's pretty heavy, weighing in around 600 grams. And the block on this, the base, is solid copper and it's 3 eighths of an inch thick. The top has 429 pins. If you recall, the older MCX 478 that they had, the heatsink had only. 371. Well, this one has a whopping 429 aluminum pins. Now, each one of these pins have a rib pattern that helps dissipate the heat even better. Also, with this particular heat sink, the base is extremely smooth, which is fantastic because you get great contact between the heat sink and your CPU. When you purchase this particular heat sink, you can have a couple of fan options. This is one of them. This is called the YS Tech Tip Magnetic Drive. And how this works is there's four magnets here in each corner, and it drives it from the outside rather than something like this, which is a standard fan. And that drives it, of course, from the center. You can see here where this would be a little better because the air would be pushed down into the center of the heat sink more so than something like this therefore giving you better cooling now the specs on this particular fan are 74 millimeter by 74 by 15 it's around 5800 rpms it pushes 36 cfms and it's a quiet 39 decibels the items that are included to install both the fan on top of the heat sink and then install the whole thing, the cooler, right to the motherboard are you get four screws as well as springs and they go on these screws and then get mounted to the heat sink and then the heat sink goes onto the motherboard with these four nylon nuts which go below the motherboard and you also have four standoffs here as well. Right here we have four very long screws. These are used to go through this fan, and then the fan goes mounted on top of the heat sink. But before you do that, you would use these particular rubber washers here to cut down on vibration. Installing the fan on top of this heat sink is extremely simple to do. First of all, go ahead and lay down those four rubber washers. Then go ahead and carefully place the fan on top of here, aligning everything up. Once that's done, then you can go ahead here and screw all of these screws down into the heat sink and mount the fan really securely on top. Your particular motherboard might come with one of these brackets. You want to remove that bracket first and then start the installation procedure of installing this cooler right onto the motherboard. Now, the first thing you want to do here, there's these four standoffs and these go like so down from the top and then each of them will be anchored via this nylon nut from the bottom, as you can see, and you just do that three other times. Once that's done, you can see the four standoffs on the top. And again, this is how it's anchored via these four nylon nuts on the bottom. The next thing to do is pop in your CPU, then apply some thermal compounds, then take the whole cooler back to the motherboard and go ahead and assemble the screws and the springs. Now the springs just go slipped right on into the screw and then you go ahead and screw down each one on either corner and once that's done you have the whole cooler attached very securely to your motherboard. Just to give you some indication how loud this particular fan is, let me go ahead now and turn it on. Let me also increase the audio.
and as you can hear, it's very quiet. For comparison's sake, this is the standard cooler which comes with every retail version of the Pentium 4 CPU. Now this one is extremely quiet. As a matter of fact, this is so quiet that when it's inside your case, it's not going to be heard. But this will really give you some appreciation for actually how quiet the YS Tech fan is. And of course, remember, the YS Tech fan is going to push a lot more air than something like this. Overall, this is an excellent product. Some of the temperatures I got on this were 36 degrees Celsius at max load using a 2.26, not overclocked, at the default voltage 1.5, as well using Arctic Silver 3. Now, what about you want to go ahead and overclock a CPU like this? Well, I took a 2.26 all the way up to 3 gigahertz using a voltage at around 1.7 volts. And let me tell you, it's very difficult to keep a CPU at that kind of speeds cool. This does, however, keep it cool, but it's a little high at around 58 to 60 degrees C at max load. If you're going to be going that high, I would recommend the Delta Option fan you can get with this heatsink. But overall, no questions about it, this is definitely a kick-ass product. Again, my name is Rodney Reynolds, and this has been another video review. Be sure to check back very soon, and I will have a brand new one for you then. Also, check out my website at www.3dgameman.com. And while you're there, pop into the forums. You can go in there and register. Registration is free. You can leave your own suggestions and comments, and you can find out all kinds of information about all the products which I video review. Until the next time, take care.